Um, please remember to mute yourself if you're um, if you're not speaking. Um, so that kind of plays into this is intended to be interactive. So if I'm going through something, you have questions, comments, concerns, please stop me. Uh, you're very likely not the only one with similar questions or concerns, and it'll be easier to address at that point. Um, so quick overview, just kind of explaining why we're making this change. Our ultimate goal is 100% accurate payroll, 100% of the time. That's probably your goal too. For the time, you want to be paid, you want to be paid accurately. So in our current process, for folks who are not familiar with it, you're filling out either your time card, you're punching in, you're filling out cards manually, submitting it if you're an hourly employee. Um, that then goes to your manager who may modify or simply may sign off. That then goes into finance where it is manually keyed into a system. Then the manually key is checked, which can create errors sometimes. It's checked for those errors and then payroll is done. The intent here is when you put your in and you approve it, it's the time that's going to your boss. If your boss doesn't change anything, that's the time that it can be pulled in electronically straight into payroll to hopefully significantly increase the likelihood that we're going to get this 100% accurate. We also have the opportunity to avoid folks requesting time off that they may not have. You may think you still have a floating holiday. You may think you still have sufficient time in a time bank or something like that. The system actually tracks exactly what you have taken and been charged against your payroll. So your pay stub will still look the same. It will still have the time you used, your balance that's been reported as actual use. But in here, in exactly time, you will also have the time that you've requested. And it's either been approved or is outstanding. So if you've requested time, and it has not been acted upon or has been approved, it will be deducted from your balance. That way, when you go in, it will be for the actual agency and grace. And I will show you in a minute when we go into the live system. If you have any questions, you can actually go look at your latest balance. So everything you've requested, everything you've taken and consumed and all of that. So it helps avoid a lot of that back and forth and that unknown. Um, how are we addressing it? Again, I mentioned we're using exact time. It's an automated system. For folks who have used it in the past, something like it, it's similar to a Kronos and ADP, those types of systems. It's cloud-based. So you could literally log into any computer. Folks who currently punch in and out for hourly, if you have a particular clock you go to, you actually can go onto any computer, phone, tablet, and log in, log out, um, clock in and clock out if you need to do that, set up your time, request time off. Um, it will replace the time cards once we go live. So we will stop. We will stop submitting time cards. They will stop taking time cards. For folks who currently fill out the wonderful triplicate forms or duplicates if you're an hourly, those will stop once we go into this process on February 6th. So we will stop taking those. We will stop. Uh, you will stop having to fill them out. <laughs> um, there's three groups of employees for anybody who's not aware of it. One is salary exempt. These are people who are salary. You work 100 hours. If you work one hour, your salary is the same. You're not eligible for overtime. For those folks personally, they're only going to use this to request time out. It's going to re replace the triplicate forms. That's the only thing you're going to use personally. Now, you may be a manager and you're going to use it to approve people, but personally, that's all you're going to do with it. Then we have salary non exempt employees. These are salaried employees who fill out a time card today. They're, out, they're overtime eligible. It's not a frequent occurrence where they have overtime, but they are eligible for it. These are folks in the mid manager contract where they're actually identified as salary non exempt in the contract. Instead of filling out the time card going forward, you're going to be filling out what amounts to a spreadsheet online. So you won't be clocking in and out. You'll be filling out a spreadsheet. And like any spreadsheet, you could do that once a week, once a day, beginning of the day, end of the day. That's really up to you and your manager to work out. The last group are the folks who clock in and out today. Some will fill out time cards with pen and paper or pen and card. 
Some actually clock in and out of a physical car, they slide it in. That whole process will move online to an electronic clock. And again, everybody will be using it to request timeout to executive. Um, any questions there? All right. In the invite, you receive the automated time and attendance policy. I would recommend reading it. I, I took a small excerpt. I'm only going to focus on the first bullet for hourly employees. So this really focuses on hourly employees who are punching in at the start. Up to seven minutes before your shift or eight minutes after your shift is that leeway, recognizing that it's never perfect. Nobody is sitting there to talk in and out perfectly on the hour when you have it. You also have some departments that have more than one person. Right now, phase one is predominantly people who are in front of a computer every day, a good portion of the day, especially. It may not be all day, but a good portion of the day. Phase two, if you're talking with other folks, is predominantly our blue collar group. So grounds, highway facilities, the golf course, animal control, um, senior center, because they are able to clock in and out beginning and end of the day, start and end of their lunch period, because they often go back to a central place. But they're not in front of a computer all day, so we put them as phase two, and they'll be going out in about a month. Um, if you're clocking in more than seven minutes early, so an hourly employee coming in more than seven minutes before the start of the shift, you will be paid for that. Um, by labor law, we're required to pay you. It's also the right thing we do. If you're working for us, we should be paying you for that time. As a manager, if you're on the call, that should only be done if somebody is authorized. If you arrive at work early because you want to kick off the coffee pot or make a copier going or have breakfast or read the paper, all those things are fine. Nobody's stopping you from doing that at all. But if you're not actually working, even though you're here, you should not be clocking in until you begin working. However, once you start working, make sure you clock in at your starting point so you're given credit and we pay you for the time you're working for the town. Entering your time. For those who are clocking in and out, we recognize it's going to happen. People are going to forget. You're going to forget they came into the office first thing in the morning, somebody was at the counter, and they went to help somebody. Nine o'clock rolls around, you sit in the town hall, and all of a sudden you go, oh, wait, I never clocked in. Or you hit the end of the day and you logged off, you're driving home and went, I never clocked out. It's going to happen. We're all human beings. When that happens, Notify your manager immediately. When we get to approver training, for anybody who is in that as a manager or approves, it is very easy for the manager to correct that. Um, the faster we do it, the greater the likelihood. It has to be done prior to the end of the pay period. But if you notify your manager immediately, they can log right in and fix it. If your out time is different, Thought you were going to be at the doctor for two hours, you were there for three. Thought you were going to be at the doctor for two hours, you were there for an hour. It might happen occasionally. Um, your manager can go in, reset your previously approved time, and correct whatever it should be. It's, and for any managers out here, it is really not difficult to do. And it is something that you really want to do as soon as you can because it will be top of mind and corrected. And it also helps to put in a quick comment about that. Under no circumstances should anyone be should be logging in and putting in time for another employee. The one exception to that is, as I just described it, a manager who is fixing somebody's error. But as an employee, you should not be going in as someone else, clocking in and out, putting in a spreadsheet, anything like that. That's the same as today. Nobody should be filling out a time card for someone else or punching somebody's time. The last bullet is really important. I want to emphasize this. Once we move to full automation, the pay period will close 10.30 a.m. on the Monday of the pay week. So this was a pay week. We're getting, a, we're getting paid tomorrow. Um, Monday morning, 10.30, Don is going to do a poll. We pull everything at once. The system allows us a poll. We can't pull and then go back an hour later and pull a few more people and pull a few more people. So it is critical that the employee and manager have the time approved for the previous, for whatever pay week, as of that point in time on Monday. Now, today, 
you may have an employee who has their time card and they're updating it every single day. And at the end of the week, you get it. Or at the end of two weeks, you get it. The great thing about the electronic part is once they finish their day, the employee can actually approve and submit right there. And you could approve it daily if you want to. Every other day, you can approve it weekly. You could wait till 10 a.m. on Monday if you want. I would advise against it, but that's your decision. If you're a manager on the call who is approving time, the reason is because you may have personal things. You may get sick, you may get delayed, whatever. You may have technical issues. Um, the internet goes down, your computer bombs out, you forget your password, whatever it is. Um, you don't have to wait until then. As the employee is putting their time in, you're going to be able to see it. As the employee approves and submits their time, you can go in and approve it. Personally, having done this now for a couple months with Donna, who is salary exempt, she filled out a spreadsheet. Lisa, who is hourly. I actually just have a reminder every morning. It's one of the first things I do in the morning for exact time. And when we get to approver training, there's a box that says pending approvals. So all the stuff you've already taken action on, whether you approved or declined it, will be off the screen. Only the things you need to take action on will be there. As an employee, you will be able to see the status of every one of your events, whether you're requesting time off, whether you put in a time card, a time sheet. If you're a manager, if you get to Monday morning, you come into work and you see, and I'll sh we'll show you when we go live, you see a red circle with an exclamation point, that means action was not taken. If it's your action you take, it's in the employee column, strongly advise you to take the action. If it's in your manager's column, that is the point where you probably want to remind your manager, hey, you need to approve this because, well, I'd like to get paid. Um, and you will see all of that. There will be visibility for the employee and the manager, everything that's going on in the system. Before we go into the live system, are there any questions on this? What about holiday Monday and what else if you're on vacation? Um, holidays, with the exception of part-time folks who don't have a standard schedule, every other one, the holiday schedule is safe. So it's already in there, you wouldn't have to take care of it. Yeah, uh, proving that on Monday mornings. I think the question, right? Right. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. It's a holiday on Monday. It's on Tuesday. That's where right. it's delayed. So the and Monday you're shift out on that particular Monday due to vacation, then you're not in. Now your managers take care of that. Well, well you, you should have submitted. You should have put in like if you're on vacation, sure. the vacation slip should have been already approved okay. and put in. That will pop up. Assuming okay. as soon as the manager approves any week time. It pops up on your timesheet, time card schedule. You'll see when we go in, it, it lists it there already. So it could be that you put in two weeks from now. As soon as that beginning of the pan rule starts, that's already in there. Even if it's for a Wednesday in the middle of the pay period, that'll already be there. Same thing with holidays. Those will pop up as soon as that beginning of the pay rule, like Monday, we had holiday Martin Luther King Day. On Tuesday, when you came in, because obviously you weren't here Monday, but on Tuesday, if you went into your time card, time sheet, Martin Luther King Day would be there. For the equivalent of whatever hours you normally work, seven hours, eight hours, blue collar, you know, whatever the normal work, seven and a half for some nurses, whatever your normal schedule is, that holiday will be in there again, with the exception of part time people working different schedules, because those is a different way to do and lower that. So now I'm going to go into Executive. I'm going to log in as me and I'm going to start sharing. Can everyone see my screen? It should be inside of, it says you can see it, so I'll see you again. Um, you, as an employee, when you log in, if you haven't already logged in, I have a few more features because of administrator, but basically you're going to have employee actions and preferences. If you're a manager who supervises folks and has to approve, you're going to see supervisor actions and reporting. Down the side, what you're going to have. So if you are a hourly employee clocking in and out, you would come in and the clock would be in here. If you are a salary employee, whether you're exempt or non-exempt, this is what you're going to see. This is the spreadsheet I was talking about. You're salary exempt. So you don't fill out a time card today. 
we had to default a login screen. We didn't default it to the clock. We defaulted it here. You don't have to fill out the spreadsheet, just like you don't fill out a time card today. This is just your point of entry that pops up rather than the time clock. Um, you will have an opportunity to see your benefit summary. These are your hours. So these are my actual hours, my current balance. I have submitted time. So we have the question about what if you're out on Monday. I have actually submitted personal days for the end of March. They're pending approval from my manager, but you can see I started here with my balance. If they were approved, they'd be in this column. They're not approved. My manager still hasn't approved them, so they're sitting in pending. And then I have my remaining balance. You can see the remaining balance has already deducted these hours. So if you wanted to know, what do I have in these times? Especially if you get to May and you're like, wait, I, I don't want to leave more than 70 hours in there, for example, because I, I don't want to give hours back to the town. You could come in and say, that's what I have left. Now start thinking about how you're going to use it. This is for you individually. You also have a benefits calendar. So in this case, I see this day, this is just, this was a holiday. So the New Year's holiday was on there. So if you wanted to look at this from a calendar standpoint, you could even do it that way and see the time that you have out there. I'm gonna start um, from taking the time off, then showing you the spreadsheet. That way, anybody who is salary, if you're exempt or not exempt, and if you don't approve other folks, you don't really want to sit through the clock, you can hop off at that point and try to make it so that if, if you'd like to leave the session a little bit early, we'll do it kind of the opposite direction. For those who do manage and have to approve folks, I recommend seeing how the clock in and out works so you can help any folks who may have an issue with it. Um, so Time off requests and hours requests are where you're going to request time out of the office. Not time work, but time away. A time off requests is your bank of hours. So vacation, personal, floating holiday. If you are an hourly employee who accrues sick time every month, that's going to be a time off request. If it's non-bank, you're going to have an hours request. So if I wanted to take a vacation day, you can see my time that's pending is to here. As soon as it would get approved, you go. But if I wanted to do it, I just hit the plus, add a new entry. Now it comes in here for benefit type, vacation, personal, floating holiday, whatever type I want to take. The start date, end date, and if it's the same, if it's just a day, you don't have to fill in the end date, your start time. If you're leaving, obviously you're taking the whole day or you start at the beginning of your normal day. But if you were leaving in the middle of the afternoon, you would change that and then your benefit time. Critical piece with the benefit time is how much time are you taking per day? So if you're taking one day and you're taking seven hours, eight hours, or you're taking something less than that, that's very easy. If you are taking more than one day, you can put it in there as long as the hours you're taking are identical. Each day. So if you took, if you're working in town hall and you work, you want to take Monday and Tuesday off, you could put Monday and Tuesday, the benefit time you would put in would be seven, seven hours per day. And it will say here. Oh, it's not the total time? No. no. You don't put the 14. No. no. Seven per day. Per day. So for town so hall, what employees, you're taking from 2.30 on Monday to one o'clock on Tuesday, you there's a different number of hours. Two, two entries. Two entries. One entry for the 2.30 to 4.30 on Monday, and then 8.30 to 1.30 on Tuesday would be a separate entry. Just like if you're taking a full week off. Again, depending on your schedule, how nurses are different because you have the same schedule every day. So you have to take the whole week and use seven and a half hours each day and do the from Monday to Friday, and you'd be okay. And enter 37 and a half. No, 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 seven and a half. Still, I'm putting seven and a half. It's how many hours you work per day that you're taking off. Okay. Town hall people could do Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday because those are seven hours per day. So you could do from Monday through Wednesday, seven hours per day. 
a separate entry for Thursday is needed for that one day for nine and a half hours, and then a separate entry for Friday would be needed, which is four and a half hours. So again, as long as you're working the same amount of numbers each day, you can put it in in a lump. Otherwise, you have to do individual. If you have a different position, now I only have one position. Many people only have one position. That's fine. Some people have different positions. If you have different positions, you would select your position. Then there's a comment field. This field will go to your manager. So if you put something in there, you can see I've done comments, I've used them for different reasons or approved them for other folks. If you use the comment, it will go to your manager. But I also warn you that it will stay with the record forever. So no big deal if you're saying, hey, uh, I don't know, um, had to leave early. You took some sick time, uh, didn't feel well, left at two o'clock. Fine. If your manager was in a meeting, you left without the manager knowing, this is going to be sitting for the manager to see. That's great. Um, I just warn that because you want to be cognizant of the fact that it's out there for auditors to review. It's, it's really out there, obviously, for anybody to review if you want to. So um, anybody who might have some uh, colorful language they may share in the office, you probably don't want to use it in there. It's just a warning, I guess. At that point, I yeah. would save it. Or personal information. Or personal Maybe information. Right. Not. Yeah. But, not, not, yeah. But probably, HIPAA, stop. HIPAA, yeah. stop. You don't want like to. Say you know. doctor's or surgery or things sick that, child. Nothing that you're going to be like, yeah, it was sick. Okay. Things, the especially salary people, because I see those, I don't see the hourly time cards, but the salary people, what you fill out, like for your sick time, for instance, on your form right now, doctor appointment. COVID, certain things that you want as a record. So if anyone were to ever look back at your usage or whatever that's there, that's where you would put those kinds of things now is in that comment field. If you are using family sick leave, each contract has a different number of hours that you could use for family, depending on certain criteria. The salary people, there's two separate leave banks. One is for your regular sick time, one is for family. So you want to drop down at the top which one you're actually using and then at the bottom comment you can put family, daughter, son, whatever you want to put. For the hourly people, it is one bank that is your sick bank. So you would take your time off under the sick bank but in the comment field you have to write at least family in there. You don't want to get any more specific than that. You don't have to but the word family needs to be in there so we know that that should be coming off of those hours that you're able to use that family time for. Um, I skipped quickly to the hours. Can I just have a one question? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that one, for example, I'm taking a week off. Okay? I'm putting start date, end date, Monday, and then Friday, but I, I put 7.5 per day, and I still do five entrances for each day? No. And if it's the same number of hours per day, it's gonna be one entry. Your start date's gonna be the Monday date, your end date is going to be your Friday date. 7.5 is in the hours per day. You can just save, and that's it. That'll take care of the whole week. The only time you have to do separate entries is if those hours per day are different. So I flipped over to hours. Again, hours is your non-bankable time. So for salary folks, this is going to include your sick time. I realize there is a limit, but it is such a significant limit that we characterize it as non-bank time. We don't accrue every month. Mm -hmm. Um, ours is the same setup. You would hit the plus and you would select. We intentionally defaulted the type to leave without pay. That is not to say we don't want to pay people for the time. It is to force people to actually select something from the drop down menu so we don't end up with you know hundreds of submissions for military service or something like that and try to figure out what the heck just happened here. You have these various options, you know, military service, jury duty. Leave without pay is on there, but just a reminder that has to be pre approved. Um, conference, training. So you're going out for training. We tried to do is mirror that triplet and sheet. So these would just be the same things that you had on there. Holiday, the only time you're ever going to have to use this is, as I said earlier, if you're a part time person who has a non standard schedule. We have some of those, like in the library, for example, because their schedules fluctuate. You are not automatically given your holiday because you're not necessarily eligible for every holiday. 
So we would have to submit the request for a holiday time. People who are going beyond the call for town hall, most of the library permanent folks, um, we have grounds on here. They are holiday eligible to schedule for holiday are loaded in for you. You don't have to do anything with it. For the nursing department too, if you have health aides or um, health aides or um, part time nurses that work, say Monday, Wednesday, Friday type schedule, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday only, they are going to have to put their holiday time in if they're eligible for that holiday. So if you're working Thursday and Friday only and it's a Monday holiday, you are not eligible for the holiday, so you wouldn't put it in. But if you are a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday employee at four hours each day, you would use that holiday code and put four hours per day. And then in the comment, you can write Martin Luther King Day, President's Day, whatever holiday happens to be the one you're putting in for. But you are going to have to put those in if you have those kind of schedules where you don't work every day, um, but you are a union eligible person that you are eligible for holiday pay. And then the manager on that side is also going to have to know as far as approvals go, is that person approved for that holiday being on Monday, Friday, or whatever that holiday may fall? If that sounds really foreign to you, that probably means you don't have someone who is affected by this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so again, you would select your time, you would select start end time, number of hours for that period. So this is where you might take sick time because of sick family or you went to the doctor. This is a period of time where you might have shortened hours. Um, as a reminder, and, and this is what my team does, but you guys as managers, you can decide how best to do it. We often put these in after the fact because you go to the doctor, you're just not sure. Now, if you want to know in advance, you can do it. And like I said, as a, as a manager, I will show in the training for the approvers how they can go in and reset. So you put in and say, I'm going to give the doctor for two hours, you're there for two and a half. Your manager can go in, reset that back, change the time to two and a half and do it. Or you could wait and say, just submit it once when you get back in and give me the time and I'll improve it then. That's a personal choice for each department. We just want to make sure the time is captured as we do with the sheets today. So there is a good amount of flexibility. That's, like I said, the time off. That's how you would do time off and hours requests. Once you hit save, it's going to be in here. So like I said, my stuff hasn't been approved by my manager. So it sits out here. I hit save and they're out here. I can see, I mentioned the red circle with the exclamation point. That means not approved. If you hover over it, this request is pending. It will say who has not approved. Um, that's going to be your... Approver. Every approver also has a backup, with the exception of Roche, because we don't have a second person in that office. Um, but like in my office, Gail Erickson, my guy, or in yours, if I identified yeah. as Dylan, if it should be somebody else, I sent the spreadsheet out to all the approvers and backups. Um, if for some reason it should be different, let me know. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about in that spreadsheet, it means you're not an approver or a backup. So congratulations, you don't have to deal with that. So, um, <laughs> um, so this is where it would be. I left one up in here. When we were testing way back, you can see back in early 2022, I had put in, I was leaving it too, and I put a note said lunch plus hour and a half of sick time. That's just what I took my lunch there at the end of the day. If you come in here and say, you know what? Forget it. I, it wasn't approved. I did that wrong or thought I was going to take some time. I'm not going to now. Something came up or whatever you plan to do got changed. If it hasn't been approved, you can come in here, hit this button, and delete the entry. If it hasn't been approved, you can also hit the pencil and modify your entry. So if you put in the sick time to say, hey, just going to give you a heads up, and your manager says, you know what, I'll approve it. After, but if you're going to the doctor today, I'll go in Friday morning. If I go in every morning, I'll wait till the next day and approve it then. You could actually go in and say, I wasn't in an hour and a half. It turns out I was there for two. I could modify, save it, and resubmit. So in this case, when we were testing back then, we'd use military service. But let's say I'm like, oh man, I messed up. It was supposed to be sick. 
and was actually gone for three hours. So now I could say, the comment, I won't change it, but I save it. When I come back out here, it now shows up as three on that. So you can modify if it's not approved. You can see that these times were approved. I can no longer modify. My manager would have to reset that back to pending in order for me to be able to modify it. The manager can do it literally by in manager training. They will get it. They check a box and there's a button that says reset the pending. Check that box, reset the pending, and you'll get an email that says time's been reset. So um, it is not difficult to do, but you have a lot of opportunity. You, as the person who puts the time in, you have a lot of opportunity to make changes up to the point it's approved. Then it has to be reset back to you. And if you want, like I'm going to do, because this was just test them, delete it, and it's gone. Now, it's always going to be in the history. There is a way for us to go and say, oh, it was done, but it's not going to be pulled in. You're not going to be charged for the time. Any questions on selecting and pressing out time? And if you get confused on time off or hours requests, if you click on one and the time you're looking for is not there, it means it's in the other bucket. <laughs> So now I'll do timesheet entry. This is for your salary non-exempt. Again, salary exempt people, if you don't fill out a time card today, you're not filling out any of this. This is just for the exempt folks placed on the time card they do today. Again, using the plus. Plus is our friend here. I'm going to select a new time. Let's say I came in and I logged in this morning. I said, I'm going to get my time for yesterday. Started at 8.30. I worked seven hours. It was regular time. Suppose I had something different. I could select it from the menu. If my position was different. So if somebody works, say they work in one department, but they cover for snowplow or they cover for something else. Um, we have some part-time folks who might work in one department, but then cover others and they're charging into a town-wide department for part-time town-wide help. They would select the new department. And then I would save it. So if I put that in for this would say yesterday, do I want to save? I'm going to say yes. So now the time is in there. Again, I can copy the row, I can delete the row, I can go in and modify. I would be happy. Um, if you worked the same time, you would you still have, have to change the schedule. date. You would still have to change the date. So copying it is. But I know I worked seven hours every single day. I just copy and then select a new date, save, and I'm done. Exactly. And it's then not a plus. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You just want to make sure that you are treating doing everything. Now, so I put the timesheet in. I go to time approval. I have time out here. So it shows 8.30, I had seven hours, so it's showing 15.30. It's giving me credit for all of that time. Um, what it's doing is, because it's me, it's assuming I took an hour of lunch. So it's, it's actually coming in at that time. But anyway, you see here where the employee has the circle and the approval. If I hit approve and submit, this will go green, like this one did up here, and then my boss will get it. This dashboard will see you. Even when you approve it and you see the green, see how this shows, well, my boss never approved the time. This is where I said, you will know based on your time approval, and for those who are hourly and punch in and out, you'll have a similar setup with time approval. You will see exactly whether the approver, whether your boss has approved. So you will know if you came in on Monday morning and it's 8.30, 9 o'clock, whatever it is, and you see any red circles with an exclamation point through it, you want to make sure you have talked to your boss. And if your boss is in, you talk to the backup. Hopefully you know who the backup is. I would ask your boss if you don't uh, to know who it is. So you can say, hey, Want to prove my time so I can get paid? 
or whatever you talk to each other. Um, so that's literally what you would do is hit approve and submit. And you as the employee, you're done. So if you're salary not exempt, instead of filling out the time card, you're done. You could do that every single day. Your manager can approve it every day. You could do that at the end of the week. You could do it as frequently as you and your manager feel comfortable. It just has to have the green circles on our employee approver by the time we do the poll on Monday morning at the paving. Any questions for salary non exempt? Nothing? Okay. Um, one thing I will tell you is it will show up in here with the initials. So who actually approved? So the employee approval was me. And that was for this one that I approved. If I approve this one now, it's going to show up with another KB. Whoever approved it, their initials will show up. So if it's the manager, it's the backup, their initials will show up. Um, now I'm gonna go, I'm gonna log out of here, me. And I'm gonna log in as our friend, Joe Hourly, fake hourly person in the system. Any of the salary people, exempt or non-exempt, if you don't want to sit through the rest, you guys are done. That's your time off. That's your time sheet. This is for the hourly clock in, clock out. So it's all up to you. Yeah. Um, so clock in and out. So you're hourly folks. You're filling out time cards today. Maybe it's on paper. Maybe it's emailed to somebody who puts it on a spreadsheet. Maybe it's actually physically sliding the card in and out of clock. You would log in, so I just logged into the system and it pops up with my clock. You would literally clock in and you're in. You can see the status. Earlier this morning, I clocked in as Joe Hourly. You would, it would show us clocked in. I'm now clocked in. I'm now ready to go leave for lunch, let's say. So I'm going to clock out. It's lunchtime. I would hit the clock out. If I'm leaving for some reason that I want to leave, message from my boss. So I'm clocked in and out, right? Joe Hourly's in, he's a financial specialist, clocked in. I clocked in under test for training on 126. That's just a comment I put, so it would be there. But now I'm clocking out, I might add to that. Don't feel well. Go in home. And I hit clock out. So now I show up as clock out. I go to my time approval, just like we did with the spreadsheets. And if I go look at his time for today, Joe Hourly clocked in at 7.13, just clocked out at 11.10, where we are right now, even though my clock is way off. 3.75 hours. Test for training on 26. Don't feel well going home. Now my boss sees this, they can see, oh, you clocked out at 11.10, what the heck's going on? Don't feel well going home. You can obviously talk to your boss, but if you're not in the office, if for some reason, you, or if your boss was in a meeting, you left and said, I am just feeling horrible, I'm gone. This way, at least when, you, when your boss comes in and looks at the time, they understand why you left at 11.10. To give you kind of perspective on how this looks, so this is the time log. This is the daily time. How much time did you log for that day? So I'm sorry, for this line. This is for the line. This is for the day total. So if you had two items on a given day, the total of that day is going to be in the um, daily total. The weekly total, that's your running total for the week. Ideally, that number is going to likely be 35, 37 and a half, or 40, depending on what your normal week is. It doesn't have to be. Could have worked last time, you could have worked overtime. But as a manager, when I'm going into approving, that's one thing I look at. And then the total time, which is your running total for the entire pay period, two week period that's coming, that's what that column represents. The black line separates the two pay weeks. So this was last week, that's this week for the two week pay period. The position is in here. So if somebody has multiple positions, you're going to be able to see what position they were charging against. If they left any notes, 
And then you're going to be able to see, as an employee, you're going to be able to see whether that was a true journey. So I did this yesterday for our training. You can see that I went in and, and approved him. And it's actually going to say, this entry has been approved. Who actually approved it? If I go back up, you'll see Joe Hourly was approving. I was the approver. There's a couple of things that I will show in the approver training, which is why my initials are in here. But all of a sudden, Joe Hourly says, I'm good. Those were the hours I went home. Not feeling well. I hit, went home not feeling well. I clocked out. I come over here. I hit approve and submit. And now I've got a green check mark. I log off and go home. It's now on my boss. Which in this case, we have Joe Hourly set for me as the approver. Now Joe can come in here. If he said, if it's Monday morning, and he says, hey, you never approved that time. He's going to see it on Monday morning and realize that. I, as the manager, I'm going to look at this and say, hey, Joe, you noticed you clocked out. We're feeling well at home at 1110. You don't put in a sick time request for me to go approve. You're only going to get paid for 3.75 hours. So as a manager, I'm able to see how much work did you put in on that Thursday. So that daily total is 3.75. If I'm expecting seven, seven and a half, eight, and I see something less than that, that's a trigger to me to say, what just happened? And it happens. It can happen to anybody. Um, and if he decided to put a sick time slip in before he left, the manager would see that sick time in their, their queue to approve that sick time. Once the manager approves the sick time, it's going to add another line to this with the balance of what that that sick time was for. So, um, again, the same type of clock down the side, except it's clock in and out versus spreadsheet. You have your time summary. Now, in this case, this is a, kind of a different visual rather than looking all the way across. You can see how many regular hours for the entire pay period and all the different pieces. One thing I will point out, everybody's gonna end up, this, you're amazing, everybody's gonna end up with something in rounding because it's impossible to hit exactly on to the hundredths of a second every time in and out. Uh, the seven minutes either side. Yeah. Right? Well, yeah. we'll show up there. Yeah. The seven Most minutes. people, it's going to be small. Seven like, four, whatever those yeah. minutes were. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So, what are you doing with continuing education? I live in Farmington, yeah. Seminar in Plantsville. There was no reason for me to come to Farmington. There was no way to go to Plantsville. I went right from Farmington to Plantsville, then back here. So, I when, just before noon. When you come back here, you would go into the hours request. Fill out the training seminar for how many ever hours yeah. you were at that training yeah. seminar and just submit it that way. You can put at the bottom, you know, training in Farmington or whatever. Right, right. And then if you're non exempt, you would fill in your timesheet with the balance of the hours. Right. Understood. Understood. Yes. Okay. And the, the good part is, if you, honestly, if you start that time and you put in the num total number of hours, we're really pulling your hours. You're supposed to be paid for seven. Mm -hmm. Unlike the clock in and out where it's going to actually calculate it, the salary not exempting is really about getting the seven, seven and a half, eight hours, whatever it is. Um, so this is just a different visual depiction and shows you week one, week two total. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have any benefits for him, but you saw on my sheet where you had vacation personal, you would have the same setup here because Joe is an hourly employee, same setup there, same benefits calendar. In the benefits calendar, um, you can it just gives you a little better visual if you want to see time off. One of the nice things is if I fast forward, you can see that President's Day is in here. One of the nice things here is if you're planning to take the week off and you already know, hey, wait a minute, this shows I'm out there. Oh, wait a minute, that's a holiday. You're like me, sometimes forget, hey, we have a holiday coming up. Now, if I wanted to take the week off, I know, hey, I don't have to put in for the 20th. I can put in for the other time, and I just find it easier to see it visually. So you have the calendar or your list, whatever's easier for you. <laughs> and then again, the time off request, hours request. 
And the last step, make sure you always go into the time approval and approve and submit your time. And from there, so you're either saving your out time request or you're approving and submitting your time. And then the other one basically looks like a dashboard. And you'll be able to see internet pieces. <laughs> For the people who have like the nurses, for instance, if you have different positions, you're a school nurse, you're working home care, you're doing overtime, you're doing um, summer school. When you go to clock in, you're going to always want to hit that edit information button. If you are doing something that is not your regular position, if you're a school nurse, your regular position is school nurse, home care, home health aid, uh, uh, school health aid. If you are doing anything aside from regular position, your regular position, you get clock in, clock out, that's all you have to do. Anything else, we're going to drop down that top field, that type, and it's going to give you your options. This doesn't show everything because obviously it depends on the person and what they have available. But you should see summer school, overtime, those kind of things are all going to be in that drop down. That's going to be added. If, for that's, example, I'm working um, uh, in eight and a half hours today mm -hmm. instead of seven and a half. So I would add time. No, because you're working under your normal nurse. You're still doing oh, okay. nursing work. So in, you would just clock in, clock out when they're start and end, it'll calculate itself. itself. The overtime, when you drop down and pick overtime, that's more for if you're called in. If it's something that's not like I'm on call. No, on call is different. On call for the nurses is going to be still done the old way. So your weekend on call and the nightly on call that you guys get paid the flat dollar for yes. before, that you are not clocking in and out for. You're only clocking in and out for your other regular position. Yes. Um, and if you, your position, which is down at the bottom where it says finance specialist, if you are a school nurse, but you're working for home care, there's a few people that do that. This is where you would change from your school nurse position to your home care position to get paid the right amount. Um, don't, I know because if there's any nurses on here, I know you guys have more stuff than the normal person. So I just wanted to show you. And then in that edit info, you still have that clock in and clock out. Once you're done putting in, dropping down what you need to, picking the right thing you're doing, again, you would just hit clock in. It would clock you in under that position. Once you're done with that position or that different type of whatever you're doing, you hit clock out. So if you were at the school, for instance, and you were doing your normal school nurse from eight to noon, and you would clock in, clock out like normal. Now at 12.01 or 12.30, you're doing summer school program. You go back in, you hit edit info, drop down the summer school and clock in from this screen and clock out after that. And it'll give you the correct position, the correct thing you're actually doing. Okay. And how about weekends? Like if I work Saturday and Sunday, do I clock in, clock out? If you're supposed to be paid for the overlay, if you go out for a visit, now the regular on call, when you're just on call, that's different. Yes. If you get called and you have to go to a patient, yes. then you would just clock in you under overtime. You would yes. drop it down for overtime and clock in under overtime. Oh, it, would, it would show overtime for you. It's, it wouldn't things say call in. It, things yeah. We selected. yeah, on yours, it should say, when you go into edit info, yours will say um, home care nurse overtime. You'll have those options. And then you would hit the overtime clock in when you're done with that visit, you go back in and clock out, and then it would pay you for the overtime. You hit edit info. That's where it was. Gotcha. And that's right. Yes. Yeah. One. OT or regular. So it would be OT. Yes. So that would be OT. So you would pick that and just hit clock in there. And then when you were done with that visit, just go back in and hit clock out. That's going to clock you for whatever that visit was on that yes. Saturday. So usually on Saturdays, we have like, I end up like five visits or six, which is a normal like seven and a half hour day. So do I just check in in the morning back out after I'm done? If you're going one to the, the other, yeah. yes. Okay. If you're, if you have, if you go to a call at eight in the morning and now you're done at 830 and you're done, but then they call you back at noon, then you're going to clock in and out and then clock in and out at noon. Okay. But if you're consistently going from one patient yeah. to the next, because you have five scheduled or whatever, then yes, clock in and, and clock out beginning and end. That's, that's a really good point to bring up. I mentioned it. For folks who clock in and out, you should be clocking out when you go to lunch and clock back in and clock out at the end of the day. One of the questions that has come up is, 
Many of those contracts for folks clocking it out, they're getting 15 minute break in the morning and afternoon. You're not clocking out and back in for the break. That's considered a paid break. So essentially think of it as if you're on paid time, you clocked in, you stay clocked in. The clock is running, you're being paid for that time. You're only clocking out because you have unpaid lunch time here. Um, but if you have a break or if one of your employees has a break and that's paid time, they stay on the clock. And we came home for building lunches. We just worked through. So that means I clock in, clock out half an hour earlier. Well, you would clock out when you're done working. Yeah, and if it's at that time, then as long as you're you're doing your seven and a half hours, yes. like in the screens where Kevin was showing where you're you have your, your hours, as long as they're seven and a half hours, that's up to you and your manager and as far as how you whatever you guys work out and whatever. Um if you are taking a lunch, you clock in and out. Yeah. But it, for like you said, if there's sometimes you don't or whatever you do, then you would just it would show the normal a number of hours, seven, seven, you guys would be seven and a half, but yeah. that's where it would show that. And you asked the question about what you went to the conference. The time you were at the conference would show up this way. Gotcha. So it would show up as an out time, mm -hmm. as conference training, mm -hmm. and then the rest would show up as regular time, whatever. It wouldn't say clock in and out in spreadsheets. <clears throat> So when it shows up here, if you have to clock out for a lunch, it shows up as two lines, three and a half and three and a half. Or it'll or show up two and a half. It'll show up. Yes, the, the it'll be like eight to twelve, and then the next line will be twelve thirty to one or it's four. One to one yeah. yeah. Okay. So this bucket up here is probably not going to change anything. This right here would let it. As well, opposed to showing seven hours, geez. it shows three and a half and three and a half if you actually split it in your day. Right. Exactly. Right. So it's two lines for each day. So there's actually. You can see here there's two, two for Monday the 16th. I I just used it in Joe Hourly's time for showing it. So you can see it was four hours, then eight hours. So it's four hours on the weekly total. Now it's up to 12. Then it got to 14.25 the running total. They are both Monday. So typically what you would find is there would be an in and out for the morning and an in and out for the afternoon. You would have two lines. Same thing with the Thursday, so right? The the day, yeah, no in and out of this. Because that's a holiday setup. So you would really right. punch. Yeah. Yeah. I'm focused on the in and out. <laughs> but if you look yep. at yep. If you look at the Thursday right underneath, Same it shows 11.35 in, 13.55 out, and then it's Thursday again for 13.55 and then 13.55, but that would be your like after lunch, afternoon time on a normal clock in and out with lunches punching in and out. That's how it would show up. What happens if we're on the road? Typically, your clock in and out people typically are not on the road. Um, they're, they're not... We moved blue collar to phase two for that reason because they typically start the morning, they, they come into the location, often the complex, and they end the day at the complex when they drop off the van or truck. Um, they often, they don't have to, but often take lunch there too. They have the lunch room, the break ending. So they're coming back to a location where they can be there. And um, you, Jeff, are not clocking and out. You are going to be the timesheet. So if you're on the road, it's really not going to matter for you. You're going to go into that timesheet the end of your day, the next morning. You're going to put in the date, the number of hours worked, your start time. Yeah. So you don't have to really kind of worry about that yeah. too much per se, because you can always add that timesheet on Wednesday or Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday if, if you weren't in or, or whatever. Yeah, there's a recognition that we do have a lot of salary, non exempt folks. <clears throat> the salary exempt folks don't fill anything up. The non exempts are going to be moving around similarly. Mm -hmm. uh, you can be in and out of meetings, you can be working on uh, times, whatever it is. So we went with the spreadsheet option. We're legally required to have a record of the time. If you're eligible for overtime, the Department of Labor says we need to know when they work. And so we can guarantee that you're paying people appropriately. And they have the right to come in and audit us and make sure it's there. But because there's so much fluctuation with our salary, not exempt people, 
we went with a spreadsheet that you can fill out when you have that time. So what happens with the comp time as well when we're called in? Comp time is now up to your department head. Okay. That was in this contract. Comp time is not checked by the anymore. <laughs> um, so anytime you earn or use that, you and Frank, you yeah, and Frank yeah, would, yeah. however Frank does it, if he has a log or however he's going to do it, that's entirely up to Frank and that's between you guys. Great. So I know we discussed it. Yeah. So I see there's nothing in the chat. I want to, I know we're getting up near 1130. So are there any questions online? Any, anything anybody wants to ask about? Okay. Anything else in here? One other thing. Um, Monday, February 6th, that is the day that we are going to start using this as live, meaning that Monday you start punching in and out using your timesheets, whatever. For the month of February, we are asking that you do both still your regular time card timesheet, however you do it today, but also punch in and out using the system. I'm going to run the payrolls parallel for that month just to make sure everything gets picked up, just to make sure we don't have any system errors, um, anything not set up properly. We want to make sure we pay you the right way. So we're going to do that for the two pay periods in February. Once that first um, March 6th, once that happens, you will no longer be doing time cards, time sheets, nothing. It will be only the system from that point forward. Any salary people, any time off, leave time slips that I have for you guys that are after February 6th, I will be giving back to you guys. So you guys can go in and play and practice and put your time in. Again, I'm going to ask you for anything in February back just again to run the parallel, make sure everything's working fine. Um, and after that, there will be no more paper. After that March 6th date, there will be no more paper slips, no more, and none of that will be only in the system. So, and also if you guys have your logons on um, the top right corner, there's your initials in a circle. That is, if you drop that down, you could change your password and you sign out from there. Right now, your password is your first letter of your first name and then your last name. Capitalized first letter of first name and first letter of last name, lowercase rest of your last name for both user and password. If everybody can at least get on there and check that to make sure that you guys can get in and not shoot me an email. Um, and you can also start clocking in and out, doing your timesheets. You can do anything starting at this point. It just won't come in to anything live. But if you want to play with it, if you want to see what your screens look like, make sure everything is there that you need, those kind of things, I would suggest doing that. That's why we waited till the 6th to go live. So give people some time to get in there and play around, make sure everything works right and kind of figure out what you're doing. So out of the six, you kind of have a good idea of what you need to do to start using the system. If you're taking time from February 6th on, I would recommend just put it in the system. Yes. Stop the triplicates and yes. just go rather than doing it, turning them in, getting them back, turn, you know, putting them in. I'm on vacation that particular week. <laughs> just saying. Well, the thing is though, like I said, I, I put in for something at the end of March. So you don't have to wait. And I know for folks who do time cards today, so our hourly folks, you would put it on the time card typically. We're asking everybody to use the system this way. It will be much easier, I will tell you, as a manager, because as, as for approvers who will be in the training after this, when you see the calendar, you'll be able to see your entire team, which is also nice if conflicts might arise. I know I need at least one of these two here, like I need Donna or Lisa here on a Monday of paid. I have to have either the, the primary or the backup. So if they both request that day off, I can't approve it. Well, I can, but I'm kind of stupid if I do. Um, and I, it's a lot easier to see on the calendar and say, wait a minute, someone's already has this out. <clears throat> All right. Well, if there's no other questions, that is the training. And we'll take a short break for anybody who's on it for approval training and then pop right out of that. Um, so hopefully everybody had an opportunity to go through user training so I won't go through too much of the user elements I will probably reference it a couple of times but it's pretty straightforward 
At this point, what we're talking about is the folks who are going to be approving time has been submitted. So you're either an approver or you're a backup for the approver. <clears throat> Just a reminder, we have three types of employees here that we deal with. One is salary exempt. Those are salary. They don't get overtime. Um, they are only using this to request time in and out. They don't record their time. Salary non-exempt people are folks who are salaried but are eligible for overtime. If you are in the mid-manager union and have a question, one, you're filling out a time card today, but if for whatever reason you still have a question, there's actually a list in the contract of what positions are considered non-exempt. Rather than filling out the time card going forward, you're going to fill out the spreadsheet. There's really about two to four fields to fill out, save, and then you're just simply going to approve and submit and your manager will receive it. And then hourly, they're clocking in and out and everybody's using this to request time in and out. One really important thing that we don't cover in user training is it's really for the manager. The information, in order for anybody to be able to use this for anything, including requesting time in and out if your salary exempt all the way through clocking in and out, you have to be set up in payroll. It links directly into the payroll system. And in order to set someone up in payroll, we need information from HR. And in order for HR to set up an employee, we need to play with the employee's paperwork before the first day of employment. Now, this doesn't mean we need to know their health benefit decision or pension elections. It's the key demographics to set a person up in our system. So it's really important as a manager that you get that information into HR for the first day so that we can set the person up, make sure they're in exact time, and that we able to see their time, use the system from day one, moment one. If not, unfortunately, the fallback will be, you will be adding it in manually. It's not difficult to do, and we'll show you that when we go into the system, but not how we're intending to do this, not how anybody should try to do this. You as a manager are entering a lot of data yourself, not just approving, but actually entering, then there is a problem. So that's kind of the shift from the way people have been hired. Usually they come in their first day and do the paper. Well, not necessarily. The If HR knows that somebody's being hired or when their potential hire date or whatever, I get an email from HR with the offer letter and all the forms the necessary forms, W-4s, direct deposit, enrollment form, and employee data form are the four five forms, actually, there's two tax forms. But those are the five forms that I need to set up them up in payroll. HR sends that to the employee ahead of time and then says in that letter, in the offer letter, um, your first day is whatever day, Monday, whatever, the 30th, um, you will be meeting with me at 10 o'clock that morning to go through the, the onboarding process, whatever. That employee generally has that paperwork ahead of time. So that's where as a manager, if you would work with HR to figure out when you want them to start, how do we get them the paperwork, but if they're starting on a non-payroll week, it doesn't put that much pressure because now you have that week in between where you can get the paperwork, they can actually come in and start working and it's not that tight of a time frame. So but if they're out of retirement in the last year, um, I have never touched that paperwork. HR handles it completely. Am I going to have to start? Well, you're going to have to just lean up to be cognizant of if you're hiring somebody, talk to HR about their start dates. Look, they you she can look at the payroll dates and just you just make sure that 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 communication is there ahead of time, not all of a sudden. Well, I want to hire them starting tomorrow, kind of thing. You know, just talk to HR about that whole. You know, once you put post a position, once you're like yeah. So once you post the position, you do your interviews and you have somebody in mind. That's where you and HR kind of sit down and say, okay, when do we want to start hiring them? And not that it's really your responsibility to figure out pay weeks, whatever, but you also should know when the pay week is and make sure that HR is given the information she needs to, that this is the person I want to hire, this is what we need, and whatever. But keep in mind, if you're hiring an hour of the employee, and the paperwork isn't there, so the person can't be set up, they can't clock in and out. And I will, will show you in a couple minutes how you would clock in and out for them, it's not clocking in and out. You'd actually get the time so they're paid. But again, that's not what we intend for managers or backups to do. So this is it's important to, to try to get people off to a good start there as well. Two other things 
One other thing I will point out before we go to the next slide, two really important dates for this group. February 6th, that's the date when we're going to go live with this system for phase one and March 6th. In between February 6th and March 6th, we're asking everybody from phase one, so everybody who was on that email, to use this system to put in out time requests, clock in and out, submit your spreadsheets, approve time, all of that. However, we're also asking to continue the existing process. We understand that's double work. We apologize for the redundancy. But the intent is, as everybody is learning to use this, we don't want anybody to have their payroll adversely impacted as we onboard the system. So those two cycles between February 6th and March 6th are so that Donna can run it redundant and we can do everything possible to try to make sure as people are getting up to speed on this, whether it's the employee or the manager or any wrinkle within the system we may find, people are getting paid accurately through that time period. Um, March 6th, that's the date where we're going to ask that people stop submitting time cards. February 6th is the date when, for those who are salaried, we ask that you stop doing triplicate sheets and only use the online system. Show that you're really disappointed to not fill up the triplicates anymore. But we ask you to stop that. And then the time cards a month later. Um, one thing to remind you guys everybody in the email invite received the. Um, automated time and attendance policies. I just want to emphasize the first bullet on the hour of employees one. There is a seven minute before, eight minute after window. Nobody is ever going to be able to come down to the hundredth of a second every time when they're locking in and out. In fact, most likely no one, most people will never get it perfectly. Um, so there is a window of time. Recognize people are going to clock in and out. If somebody clocks in more than seven minutes early, you're going to be paying them out of your budget for that time. Now, if they're coming in and legitimately working, they should be clocking in. They're working, we're obligated legally, and it's the right thing to do to pay them while they're working. So if they come in early and they're working, they should be clocking in. However, if you should be authorizing that in advance that they're coming, there should be a reason they're coming early. If somebody just comes in early, and I, I use this every time with the train station, but if you want to start the, the coffee, if you want to avoid traffic, you like to read the paper at breakfast here. Fine, do that. Nobody is stopping you from doing any of that once you start working clock in. But there is that window. We also recognize at the end of the day, there's a little bit of, of liberty there because there could be, especially for blue collar folks, there could be a line of people as they're trying to all clock out. Nobody's going to do it perfectly. We also realize that sometimes you're on the phone with somebody, you're at the counter with someone, you're right at the end of something, and you're like, you know what, I'm just going to finish this because starting it back up tomorrow is just a pain. So we have that bit of leeway in there. Um, and you may arrive a few minutes late. Maybe that you're clocking in late. So there's that little bit of liberty. Um, but again, if they're doing it more than outside of those few minutes before, a few minutes after, that's really something you should either be approving or the manager of the conversation because it is going to affect. If they clock out 10 minutes after their end time, paying them an extra quarter of an hour if they're clocking in and out. So what do we do about if we're stuck in the counter talking to somebody? Like, do I have, and I don't even have the same problem with the counter people at the counter. Yeah. They just walk away. But if that's not, well, what, is, what do you do today? Keep talking, right? Yeah, they, the so our, our hourly people would generally keep talking. So then we're paying, but they have to be paid. But if they're still we working. don't really, we haven't had budgeted for that. Budget is, and as the budget guy, it's saying, you know, the budget has to be separate from payment. Labor law says if somebody's working for you, you should be paying. So if they're at the counter, that could be a circumstance where you go over and say, you know, he or she has to has to go home. Let me try to work with you. Can that be worked out with people who come time? Um, it's going to depend typically with the unions that clock in and out. The answer would be no. Um, if somebody works, you know, there, there isn't that. <clears throat> excuse me, it depends on the contract. Yeah. Now we're trying to work, generally, it's going to be white collar, blue collar. Uh, nurses, 
are going to have a little bit more restriction. We're trying to work through in the white collar contract that the clerical actually expires June 30th. So as part of this negotiation, we're trying to take out that um, max hours in a day and switch to what everybody has a max hours in a week. That would allow for some of that flexibility day to day because maybe they're going to still they're still going to clock out 15 minutes over or whatever on Monday. And you say, you know what, punch out 15 minutes early Friday if that's what they want, or tomorrow, or, or take 15 extra minutes for lunch. We we want, we're trying to work out that flexibility with the contract. Um, right now, that flexibility technically does not exist. Uh, but because we do recognize the life factors, I mean, it's, it's not like, I'm sorry, it's 4 30, you're going to have to leave, push the out the door. And close I think it. Specifically, I know it happens. Don't be fine. Julia, it's pretty good to be talking to somebody regularly because they come in, but and on Thursdays, especially meeting nights, we have people at the counter with our white collar that yeah. is making copies for the yeah, meeting, what, getting stuff upstairs because well, it has to be in the record. Maybe and, at that point, if and we don't we have it the next day, so okay, we even. 1230. And we're trying to find a contract so that it can is go much back more reasonable. Yes. At the same time, the union also wants to be uh, sure that we're not abusing our employees, okay? that we're having work through dignity hours. It's one thing to say, hey, stay 10, 15 minutes late. I'm going to leave 10 or 15 minutes early. But if it gets to be an hour, two hours, then you know, if it's a regular pattern. So that's it's what we're right. trying to look up. It's one of my specific thoughts with the adjustment of hours on Thursdays to 6 30. Then we don't have the white power between 6 30 and 7 30. At 7, when the meeting starts, and the number of people that fly in our office because they want to get something in to the record before the meeting starts, they will see the people. They just do it. Right? Rush asks for feedback. That's fantastic. The front door is open to get to the meeting. It's just so, okay. but, well, I didn't realize that would be a thing. But now I'm seeing it as yeah. a thing because you yeah. mentioned it. So. And it's right on your clocking out on the block. So it's not, you're not writing it in, you're actually doing it. So under our contract, uh, middle management has okay. comp time is at the discretion of the supervisor. That's still in effect, right? For middle management. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And that's with your manager, that's within your yeah. department. Yeah, absolutely. Um, a couple of things about entering time. Employee, we know employees are going to forget to clock in, forget to clock out. They're going to clock out at lunch and forget to clock back in. They're going to leave at the end of it. We know it's going to happen. We're all people. It's going to happen. What we've asked users is if that happens when you're clocking in and out, if, for example, you forgot to clock out yesterday, you come in this morning and you're like, I am still clocked in. Don't just leave the clock running. <clears throat> clock out and clock right back in and then notify your manager. So as they're going through and doing it, they could either put a comment in. So they go to edit time, put a comment in, and then clock out and say, forgot to clock out any day yesterday, left at 4.30. You, and I'll show you in a minute, you can very easily go in and change that time and correct it. Um, no, one, no one should be logging in as someone else and clocking in and out of their time. Again, the one exception, you're not logging in as so much, you're still as yourself, but the manager can modify time. Manager should only be modifying time to correct an error or an omission. It should not be out of spite or because you don't have it in the budget or whatever. I mean, if, they, if a person worked the time, budget or no budget, we, we owe the pay. Um, this is the big one, the last bullet to keep in mind. And I can talk about this in the user training, I'll emphasize with the managers, which is really important for you. Monday morning of a pay week. So this is a pay week. We'll get you checked tomorrow. Monday morning, this was, we were live, so we're sitting here in March. 10.30 Monday morning, Donna's going to do a poll. It's a single poll. We're not able to do a second poll. If we do a second poll, it would double everybody's hours of people back in. By 10.30 Monday morning of a pay week, your information needs to be complete, everything in there, all your employees' information and approved by the employee and the manager by that point. Now you have the ability to approve as soon as that employee says, approve and submit, or if they hit save for out time requests, 
you as an improver could go in right at that moment. You could go in in the morning, go in at lunch. You don't have to wait. They're not going to give you something. It's sitting there waiting for you. My recommendation is don't wait until Monday morning to approve for the payroll. You could have a personal issue. You get sick, your car could break down, you could be traffic, whatever. You could have a technical issue. Internet could go down. Forget your password. System crash. You should drop your computer. Whatever it is, I would highly recommend not waiting until right there on Monday morning um, to go and do that. Again, you could do it. For my team, as I've been running this the last couple of months, I just have a reminder in the morning. It's one of the first things I do when I log on is to go to exactly time, and I'll show you. You'll be able to check a box that says pending. So it'll only be the requests that are outstanding. So if you've had, if people have put in 100 vacation requests and you've approved 99 of them, and there's one somebody submitted yesterday, if you have that box check, only that one is going to show. If you want to check the box, you'll be able to see everything you've approved. But personally, I go in and I just want to see what is it that I need to take action on. Many times I go in in the morning and it says nothing here. And I'm like, okay, move on. Sometimes it's a 30 second exercise because it's one time card, or sometimes it's 15 seconds because I just have three clicks. Time off, hours request, time approval, and that's it. There's nothing there, I'm out of it. What do you do on a Friday up like this Friday afternoon at the end of the day? Somebody, somebody clocks out. And they hit approve submit. Well, I mean, we're all leaving at the same time. So do you do it the next, you know, as you wait till the next Monday to do it? Well, I mean, you, you could also, if, if uh, Juliet just popped out, right? she clocks out, she says approve submit. You could immediately go in and say, yeah, she's done. I'm just going to approve it. And I'll show you. It's literally going to approve it. That whole thing would take probably about a minute. But they actually take before her. Right? Right. 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 Yeah, but then you're just coming in that next Monday. And right. And you only have that one thing to approve. So it takes 30 seconds to get you not doing the whole two-week period. And yeah. And keep in mind, this is a cloud-based system. So you can approve from anywhere, anytime. I'm telling people to do that, but you can um, Does this red right. flag people that are constantly late? Constantly, like they're, they're constantly late. late. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you have people that come in late, I mean, like sometimes yeah. I'll come in late because I got to go do an inspection in the morning. I know that's a, that's not the approvals, but frankly, after you make you're yeah. different. You're doing a time sheet. No, I know that. But the hourly person would show clock in, clock out, so the supervisor could see patterns eventually. Sure and see because you could see all the histories and so yeah. as a supervisor you could look deeper into that and you would see certain patterns yes what's the first i know it's unique to me but what's the first approved approver date that you need for payroll what's your payroll do you know the payroll in february it would be the 13th it would be for the, salary for that week. Yeah. So the week of the sixth that we're starting, that's the beginning of a two week pay period. The yep. two week pay period oh, for the hourly yes. employees. So the salary hourly never is giant. Salary is much easier than oh, the month month. Month. So, so yes, I, you know, <laughs> Dylan and I will have right. like the same time. Yeah. So, yeah. so that Monday, the, the, is that Monday the 13th? Yes. Oh, yeah. It's the sixth. Yeah. It is yeah. The yeah. So that Monday would be the Monday that by approve our deadline. Yep. Uh, well, I'm going to be pulling it. You could approve on Friday. And as, as somebody who is both an approver and a backup, my expectation as the backup is that the approver left an empty mailbox sitting there. That if I went in, <clears throat> if you left on Friday, you're on vacation the 13th, if I'm your backup, my expectation is that anything I see when I come in on the 13th, it better be something that, no, that was put in after you left on Friday. Yeah. That yeah. you're not leaving the back up to do your job. As the approver, you're the primary. So, like in John's case, Frank, it breaks out that following week. By the time he leaves on Friday, that should everything should be approved. And that could be in the distance. I, I have time that I'm taking at the end of March. I've already put in for that time. It doesn't mean you're just doing the next two weeks. I have like, time at the end of March that Kevin's already approved. So that's already done. That's going to show up on my time sheet. It's going to be there. It's, but, so the if, if you're, doesn't have to do but if you're, yeah. if you're putting in time, say, say the, the main person is on vacation and or away, and an employee puts in more time away in the future, 
the secondary doesn't have to approve that. No, so it doesn't fall payroll. within that just area. Right. So yes. they can that mm -hmm. can be up to the manager of yes. the department to right. do the whole right. overall scheme of and if somebody puts yeah, in for, does it work? If somebody puts in for time beyond what you're covering, so you're out for right. only program. covering that one. If it's into the future, the backup can approve it. But if there's a question, I don't really know because um Paulie already has the time off. I don't know that, you know, I that's a bad example. Let's say two people that are conflict have to have one of those two in. Right. I don't know that I can approve that because it looks like somebody's already out. I'm leaving that. But that's why I want to make sure approved. we can leave it even though we did during that. It would just sit there with you'll see the red circle yeah. sitting out there. The actual time they're taking if that's in that area, then they have to. Um, this one, I just want to emphasize, number one, you shouldn't delegate your sign-in authority. The approver and the backup, if, when they log in, if you log in and you click on the supervisor tab, if you're a backup, you're going to see the same things that the approver is. Just generally, the backup is not going to I'm the backup for Debbie Swan and the tax one. When I go in and look at my stuff, I see her whole team. I don't take action on it. She's out, I'll take action on it. So I can see it all as the backup. There's no flipping a switch or anything. You'll be able to see it all the time. That's the backup. But I defer to her because she's running that office. I don't know if approving is, is appropriate or not. Um, so there's no reason to delegate to someone. You as the approver and your backup have the same thing. You see the same thing. Nobody has to be delegated approval, approving authority. <laughs> okay. Um, that we're going to go into the system. So I can try to show you guys. I'm going to log in as in. Right. So this is what mine looks like when I go in. When you go in, you're going to have employee actions. That's for you personally. You're obviously, for those who are salary non exempt, you're going to have your timesheet that will pop up. This is what your screen will look like. So you can put your time in. And we already went over that. It's very simple to put in the date. The start time, the number of hours, the type of position saved, and then you go to time approval and you would approve and submit. You will also have a supervisor's action tab. That's where you're going to be going in and approving any of the activity. So as a, as a reminder, these are the things you're seeing. I can see my benefits calendar, my benefits summary put in for all this. Time. First thing you want to do if you're going to be approving is uncheck the box. This box is saying, who am I looking at? Right now, it's only looking at me. You're going to uncheck that box and click on the supervisor actions tab. That's going to bring you to your dashboard. I have one pending approval, no time off approval request pending. I can see it on my dashboard. As you look down the side, many of these are going to look the same there. Instead of Taking time off when you were the employee, you put in for time off, you're going to have manage time off, manage your hours requests, and then time approvals at the bottom. Those are really the three buckets you're going to look at. You can do an attendance audit, approval audit. You can play around and see a lot about your team. Um, this system is designed for people who might have 50 people on their team for many departments. You're going to already be aware of the ins and outs. You may not know two of them in it, but you're going to be aware of who's in, who's out, who's not in, and stuff. But those are all available to you. I recommend that you start with manage time off and manage hours request because when somebody asks for time off or an hours request, then as a reminder, time off is bank time, hours request is non bank time. You will approve their request for that. And then it will appear on their timesheet, and you'll have to approve again on the time approvals. 
that's intentionally redundant because there are people who request time, forgot they requested the time, goes on their timesheet and they either work because of business needs, work because their plans changed and they never actually took the time off the request away. They intended to leave at two, but it turns out they didn't get out of here until 2.30 or 3. And that would never happen. <laughs> and so you want to make sure that the timesheet is what's getting pulled in. And so by going in and approving the timesheet, it's a final validation that yes, that is in fact. So you go in to manage time off. If anybody had submitted a time off request, again, this is vacation, sick person, it would show up here. It's going to look the same as if somebody did an hours request. It's only going to have the pending because I selected it. So if I come in here, I'll uncheck pending. And Lisa requested vacation in June. Um, you can see here, she has multiple entries. She's taking a week off. So she put in the time. It says vacation week. It's going to tell you if they've got multiple entries in there. They took two days or more. This request has multiple entries. That tells you that there are multiple items here. If you know that's 35 hours, that's her normal week, I'm fine with that. You can come over here, hide the link request, and it's just going to show you that day. So you can see all of the daily details from Monday through Friday. Or you can just see the last day and it shows 35 hours, but it tells you it has multiple requests. I'm confused. I'm sorry. <clears throat> but it shows the 35, but it also shows each day. And what part of that auto loads or what did she have to put in? The whole thing will auto load. It auto loads. Yeah. This is as a supervisor, as the manager, you're seeing that. This person took 35 hours, but it's saying that there's multiple days involved. Because it recognizes that there are days in a row. On this particular day, she had personal time just on that particular Friday. So it only shows with the one, it doesn't have that. Does that make sense? And you can see on the left, the ones that have the multiple entries, there's one little checkbox on the top one, which is the basically your whole total entry, the ones underneath don't have that box. Those are just the details of what that top line with the multiple entries is. See it automatically fills in when I check it? Uh, or you can hide it and just like I said, see the one if you don't want to see all the details. But So that's where the plus and minus come up. Yep. If the plus is there, it's because they're in the round. So now if I click pending, it's only what's sitting out there for me. So I typically go in and only have the pending because if I've already approved it, I guess, or declined it, it might be going to decline. But if I've already approved it, I don't need to see it again. You already requested the time, I approved your time, fine. I don't look at my triplicate sheets over and over again. I don't. So this way, you could have, there are many mornings where I come in, and once we go by and I have more people than just the two we were testing, it's different. But if I came in on this morning, I literally click it. No time off requests, no hours. Requests. Then I go to time approvals. This is when we were in the training earlier, Joe Hour with this here, he put time in. So he has time. So his schedule is right here. His timesheet is in here. And you will remember that. We, I clocked in and out and he had his time. Joe came over and approved his time. And this is the one I said, it was 1110, don't feel well going home. He put that note in. Now I, as the manager, have that. Every single one of these, whether it's time off, whether it's hours, whether it's time approval, you're gonna have an approve or reject button. You also have a comment field. I could put, oh, you feel better. And I hit approve. Kevin, are the holidays automatic? automatic? 
Uh, for everybody except part time, you don't know, part timers you don't have the standard schedule. Everybody else, the holidays are loaded. They're just doing it. So now I approved it. I have no more pending. My whole team is done. I'm done. I can log out. I've done my approvals. I'm going to go back in and just pull up Joe so you'll be able to see if this freeze. <clears throat> now you have the green check mark. All of these have to be green check marks in order to be pulled in. Joe, if I log in as Joe, he's going to see the same thing. So your employees also know if they're an hourly employee, and if you haven't approved it, they're going to be able to see that. It needs to be Monday morning. Let's say, since John's here, let's say Juliet's sitting there. There's a red circle with an exclamation. Last Friday wasn't approved. Frank isn't in his office, he's sitting around. She can go and knock on your door and go, John, I put in my time last week, it's approved. It's 9 30. I don't know when Frank's going to be back from his call. Can you go in and approve it? You would see the same thing on your dashboard. You could go in and literally get approved. Whoever approves their initials are going to show up here. So if in that instance, if Frank was approving every single day, his initials are coming across, your initials would be here, John, to show that you did the approval last of people. Um, so if there's in the far right column, the approvers column, there's three things that are red. How in the top of the top it just was approved. Like where do you how is each line connected to the top? I don't know if you know what it, it's, it, it's connected in the background. You wouldn't be able to take this. What's gonna happen? The reason this works is because if you if the person clocks out and submits their time every day, then you can say it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It's basically the submission they do. So if you submit weekly, your initials will only be at the once. You could have five initials for Joe Hourly and one for the approver if you approve me. If, like in my case, if Lisa submits her time every day and I go in every day, there's going to end up being five in her five of my initials. But you only do it once There's for the whole initial. week. Your There's initials no are time. only once. But yep. what if, say, the backup is only moving, say, that somebody went home sick, not a request for future? Or no, that's a different tech. That's a different one. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's I different. Think, so it'll really into once it's approved, approved it brings it into the time clock. Yeah. But it's it not. It's really the time clock. Yes. So the time clock up to that. Well, or up to or your own. This is this is basically the equivalent of the time card. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yep. The time card. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Frank, I noticed you had your hand up. Question? Yeah, can you hear me, Kevin? Yep. Okay. My my question is, when somebody submits for a uh, request for time off. Is there a record or is there some way to tell at what time that was requested? So if you know John says to me, Oh, I told you yesterday I wanted this day off, you just didn't approve it, or if it was done weeks ago or months ago or something. There's, like that. there's a creation date. That's what I mean. Yeah, something like that. It is the date and the time when that was actually created. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. So in that scenario, you'd be very, you'd very easily be able to figure out who was right. It'll be, and, it'll be me. <laughs> and you both have this exact same dashboard. So what you know, obviously Lisa would have the same one here. She wouldn't see Donna, but Lisa would look the exact same row as what I have. And that also could be useful for people turning in bigger departments that have multiple time off requests turned in. We could turn it in first, and you know. If the supervisor is trying to kind of figure out if there needs to be a denial, who's going to get denied, you know, because you can't have everybody out at once, you know, that kind of thing. So you could also use that date and time to see when. When you come in to manage time off, it's not in the hours request, but you manage time off. Everything you have will also be on the calendar. So this is going to be my calendar view. 
see for the holiday, my whole team had at the time. And that's for everybody or just for that individual? Because you're on a, in a your supervisor, yes, everybody. Yeah. 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 Everybody that's linked to you as the supervisor. The green ones have been approved. If there's any red, it means it's outstanding. If you want, you can approve, decline, edit from right in here. So you can, if I wanted to, <clears throat> tomorrow, Don and Lisa both have the day off. Um, Not a lot, Don. Lisa has a dentist appointment, so Donna, I'm going to go in. She's previously approved. Now I'm going to decline. Actually, <laughs> I can do that. I can double click and go in here. I could double click and edit, and I can put a comment in, save that comment, and then decline it. And say, Donna, have to decline. Um, Lisa had family emergency. Let's say, didn't say dentist, it's family emergency. Need to, I can't let you take the day off because it's Monday, paid. Save it. And then I decline it. Now, when she gets that back, she's going to see my note, and the record will be there permanently. So there would be a record of, there would actually be a record that I approved it, and then I went back in and declined it. That's did why. Did she I, get it though on the alert? Yep. Or did she, did she have to be logged in? It's an email. She would get an email. email. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Did everyone see that comment out? The approver is going to see the whole thing. Okay. You're going to see your own. The approver, the approver and their backup. Yes, the approver and their backup. We'll see the whole time. See my voice off. Yeah. So there's one other thing I want to show you that doesn't freeze up. Actually, sorry, two other things. Kevin, can you just wait a second? Yeah. The red dot on the left column. Yep. What's that? That's telling you that there is something unusual. Doesn't mean it's wrong. Um, if it, it might show in here that they exceeded their schedule, so they have more hours. So if somebody plans to work overtime, they should be selecting overtime in the drop down. But if they're working, eight hours and they end up working eight and a half. The system is automatically going to say eight hours regular time, half an hour over. It's automatically going to do that calculation. But that's going to pop up with a red circle in the exclamation points. So you as a supervisor can go in and say, that's something unusual. doesn't mean it's wrong. It's designed to draw your attention. So this same circle here means a problem over here because it's not approved. But over here, it's just designed to draw your attention. It's something not standard. If you hover over it, it will tell you what happened. And in this example, that'll never happen. You have said that negative benefit balance, just so everybody knows that won't happen because the system will not let you put in a time off request or hours request if you jump right. This one was just because we were testing. So that was why it let that, yeah, those are test things in there. So that's why it, it let her. If we overrode it to let her do it just so we could test and things like that. So, so this still allow employees to roll over to two weeks if they want to roll over. All that's weeks. within payroll. All payroll is deep in balance, okay. so their balance will. Yeah, it's not this system that doesn't be in the payroll side that the, the balances are going to stay there. And I'm not going to delete those balances, so then it'll loop back through to executive time, and it'll add it to your balance and all that. Okay. So I two things I want to show you as well is um, so. Debbie took a vacation day. It was already approved. I can't delete it. She can't delete it. It's already approved. But she said, you know what? I'm not taking that day. You as a manager check this box. You hit reset to pending. It will put it back as if it was not approved. She could change the hour. She could change the day. She could delete it. You could delete it. So if they put in the time and they don't want it, to avoid having it show up and deduct from their balance, or in the case of hourly folks, double paying them, so the vacation in for more hours, you would reset the pending and then delete, or they would modify. As soon as I hit reset the pending, in this case, Debbie is going to get an email. You have a time off, in this case, it's a time off request. You have a time off request awaiting action. It says action, it says that has been reset. So you, you as a manager can do that. You have control over that. Um, that's basically the equivalent of that little box at the bottom of the triplicate where you set up canceling my time, you check the box, sign it, 
turn it back in and time this way. This is the electronic version of that. To check the box, reset the pending, and now it's as if the employee never actually got approved for that time. But they have to come talk to you to the manager to have the manager do that. They can't they do can't anything that says I want to if it's already it. approved. If it hasn't been no, approved, then they can delete it. That's so, not honest. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Conversations are not on. No, conversation is a critical here. The other thing I want to show you, so Joe Hourly is here. Really doesn't like this screen. It freezes up over the time. The first training session that we had didn't do a thing. And this last one we just had didn't freeze. I heard did it freeze once maybe. Yeah, maybe but since then, then it, the ever any other training, it's been I think it's the interaction element. The internet here doesn't like it. <clears throat> so, two, there's one other thing I want to show you. I mentioned somebody forgets to clock in and out. So, if if they came in for this time and it should have actually been 2.75 hours, you can modify it by editing the entry. And it turns out they actually started at 11.22 instead, and I go down and I save it. Joe's time now shows 2.75 hours. And it goes reset, where now Joe is going to get an email that says your time was reset. He has to go approve and I have to approve it, but I can modify it. So that's if they, they clocked in at some point during the day but their time is wrong, you just click on the pencil and you can edit the start and stop and it will modify and it will be good. But let's say they just totally forgot. They just, for whatever reason, they completely forgot to clock in and out. You, can, you as a manager can do add new clock in and out entry. Turns out they came to me today and they totally forgot. I clocked in on 125 and I clocked out. I clocked in at 8.30, clocking out at uh, or 15.30, it's called. He was working as regular pay. Everything was normal. Joe forgot to be part of So now I've added time yesterday. I hit save as the manager. One twenty-five time I just put in 8.30, 15.30, just showed up here for seven hours of pay for Joe. Joe forgot to clock in, nobody's sitting there, it needs Joe approval or my approval. So if somebody does forget, just completely forgets, it's not that they won't get paid. <laughs> now, part of the reason we want the redundancy is if for whatever reason, you're unfamiliar with it as a manager and the person for this to tell you whatever happens. We want to make sure the time cards are clear. So if that happened, the person's still going to get paid in the month of February, but we can also go back and say, hey, as a reminder, come March, Joe wouldn't have been paid. Joe just didn't clock in. You know, you don't want to just say, oops, I forgot and move on because you won't get paid for the time. You as a manager can go do that. The time has already gone by. Yesterday's gone. Joe can't clock in and out for yesterday. So you as a manager have to do it. Or as a backup. My recommendation would be if that happens, <laughs> it can happen once we're all human and it happens. It starts becoming a pattern. That is not what we intend for the manager, the approver, and the backup to be doing. That's not what you should be doing. Our people, once they become familiar with this, should be familiar enough logging in, logging out as kind of a matter of routine. So that time you just put in overlaps the next time. That's is that exactly. why they are? Because we're testing that. Right. So it's allowing you to do that because it wouldn't otherwise allow you the overlap times, would it? Oh, what? Oh, what? You could, you could, you could submit a hundred hours for a person for a week. Um, we're going to flag it. We have some controls built in. Nothing flag. there, flag. Well, what would but show? Because it shows up at 11 30, but then they're leaving at 15 30 or whatever it is. So, so what those are the same time. So, it, see, you've got Wednesday. There's nothing that prevents the same time. 
I would come in as an approver and see that it's 9.75 hours for the debt. And I would look and say, this is a seven hour point. Why are just have to point seven five hours? That immediately draws my attention when I look at the column. When I come into review, I look at dailies and I look at weekly. I come down to the black line and I say, what's the weekly total? The weekly total is 35 because that's what I expect it to be. Then I immediately say, okay, I feel good about this. Then I do the look by day. Is there anything funky by day? But if it's 35 and I expect the person who work 35, they're getting paid for 35, I'm feeling okay coming in. I'll do a quick review, but I feel good. So that's the first place I go to look. If you see 100 down there, then you say, oh, there's something went wrong. It could happen. If somebody left at the end of the day, forgot to clock out, came in the next morning, or I actually had this during the test, forgot to clock out on a Friday, came in on Monday, it literally added Saturday and Sunday to separate days. The system is going to be smart enough to know it's a different day. So it's going to actually show them clocking out at 11.59 p.m. on Friday and night. And clock in at 12, 12 a.m. Yeah. on Saturday. Clock out again Saturday and Sunday. And Because I went in and I looked at it. I was like, how exactly do you have this much time? In, in a whole pay period, you have well, it. Well, that so you will if you look at those totals as a supervisor, that's going to immediately let you draw into this looks wrong and what is going on. Black line breaks the week. Breaks the week. And if you as a supervisor know that you have like a nurse that's working on Saturday, when Saturday pops up to that person, you're going to be like, okay, yeah, I knew about that or whatever. But if you have no patients, you know nothing's going on, and all of a sudden you see a Saturday on there, you you would be like, wait a minute, what happened here? You know. And as you're approving. It's going to automatically flip to the next person alphabetically. Just keep flipping. You don't have to go in and go, okay, let me take the next person. If I have, if Lisa and Don have been testing both submitted the time cards, then I'm going to get Lisa first because alphabetically B is ahead of W. I'm going to get her if I approve it, boom, it flips automatically, opens up Don. Now I can go on the top and pick the drop down if I want to go look at somebody's stuff because you might be approving and go, wait, I thought this other. But this other nurse putting in the time. Why are both requesting time to see the same patient? That type of thing. But if you only had the one time sheet, it's going to have the one. If you have two or three, it'll, it'll just automatically flip to the next one and let you go through it. The other thing I want to show you is you have the power to do is person's out. Let's say somebody has a sick day on Friday. They have COVID. They don't have their laptop with them. They didn't take it home. They have no way of getting it. Not going to be back on Monday. It's a payment. But I want to make sure they get paid. And I want to make sure, even if they're salary, that the time is reported that they were out sent. That's their time that I'm supposed to be approving they took it. You can do add new time entry, and every time option is available to you. So unlike time off and hours request, where they were separate, whether it's vacation, floating holiday, or you're using sick time, conference, whatever, they're all in this menu. You can enter it as that person. So I'm in here as Joe Hourly, and let's say Joe was out sick, and it was uh, tomorrow, and it was four and a half hours for town hall. Say Joe, COVID, no access, and I save it. <laughs> I'm, I'm using him as an example, so I probably ran through all of his time. Use that unbanked. Um, or use at the mallet. I use booty. Oh, yeah. oh, actually, it's probably in So now I go to his shoes. All of a sudden, on the, the bottom, you see the bereavement was added for four and a half hours. So you have to approve that too. He's going to get me. You can approve it. That's well, he does. I will show you in a minute. But he's got to approve the next time he's in. Nope. Well, he, if he's going to be in before the end of the day period, yes, he would. But if he's this not is on a Friday, oh, now come oh, Monday yeah. morning, he's not in Friday or Monday, yeah. and it needs to be in for the paper. So you want to make sure he's going to get paid. 
you as a manager, and this is a fallback because I don't think you want to be doing this, but up above, see how you're logged in and you're an approver. You can go in as the employee and you see how it says approve, reject here. You can go in here and it's now going to give you your ability to approve on his behalf. My initials, that's why I've been doing this the training session. My initials would be here. I hit approve and submit. You see now KD shows up here. When I scroll down, if it doesn't freeze up on me, he's now approved it. And it automatically reverts back to me being an approver. Right. So that, that listing doesn't show which things you approved in, uh, for him and which things you didn't. The listing it wouldn't show, list. but if we went to the record, if you went in behind the scenes of the reporting and said, I want you to see, see what happened, you'd okay. see I so you'd see which ones those, yep. those initials coincide with. Yep. Would be. And the other thing you could do if you're approving as an employee up on top where you switch the approver to employee, there's a comments box. You can put in that comments box approved on behalf of Joe, no access or, or something. So you can add as a manager, you could approve your initials will show too, but you could also put that comment as to why. So if you ever go back down the road, why did you do it for him? You would have that record saying that, you know, out with COVID, no access or something. Few minutes ago, Frank had his hand raised. Oh, sorry, Frank. Done, but <laughs> sorry, Frank. Frank. I, I just figure I'm I'm irrelevant right now, so that's okay. <laughs> Maureen's got um, you. Go. I got a couple of questions on that. One is as a as an approver, the comments you were making about going in and being able to edit somebody's time. Is there a limit to how many times that can be done as the supervisor or the approver? And or is it traced or, you know, a history created? Do you guys see that, hey, Joe's supervisor has been editing this employee's time card over and over and over and over again? Um, um, that's the two main things. I'm just wondering if I have, you know, if I run into like John is constantly just not doing what he's supposed to do and I have to <laughs> constantly correct it. And or what you just made a statement about you going in and changing yourself to be Joe hourly. Weren't we just told before not to ever go in and create ourselves, a t you know, at alter somebody's time card? As, as that person, you wouldn't log in as that person. But the first question is, there's no systematic limitation. Um, I, I would think as a manager, if you're, if this is a recurring pattern, that now becomes, frankly, becomes a performance issue that you're just not doing your job. It would be the equivalent of somebody who was supposed to submit a time card and never submitting their time card. At a certain point, you say, okay, this is a problem. Like, you're just not, this is part of what you need to do. Um, you, you do have the option of not putting in the time or not modifying. If somebody doesn't get paid or gets shorted their hours because they didn't do the job right, it's pretty likely that they're going to learn very quickly what they need to do to make sure they get paid correctly. That okay. is not our intention. We're not trying to underpay people or anything. Um, but over the user training, approval training, we've shown you literally everything you could be doing in here. The reality is most of what we've shown you, you're rarely ever going to actually use. Hopefully your employees are doing it correctly. Hopefully everybody's, there aren't a lot of issues. The approval process, like I said, I, I can do the approval typically in a morning in about one to two minutes and I'm done. Now, again, Donna, Lisa, people have been using this in my office for a little while, trying to test it out and, and break it. So it starts to take a little bit of time. That's why we're going uh, redundant for the first month. But if you're truly doing that, and I would reinforce with people, if you're fixing, you should say, I went in and fixed this. I'm not going to do that when we go live. So they're aware that you're doing something that's really not intended. The things I just showed you at the end to approve on someone's behalf, you're not actually logging in as that person. You're still yourself. You're doing it as a manager to make sure that the information is correct. Because if you're going to approve the timesheet and submit it, you're also saying, this is accurate. Go ahead and pay them. This is the equivalent of submitting an invoice that you know is wrong, you wouldn't do that. You wouldn't say, hey, go cut a check and pay the vendor who should be getting $100, pay him 100,000. You would have that corrected, I would hope, and then submit it. That's what we're doing here. 
And there is a record, Frank. The initials up on top, like when Kevin just did that last one that he approved for the employee under the employee. Right there, it shows Kevin did that for the employee. So there is a record, there is history that will show that you're doing it 100 times for the person or whatever, or you can see it right here in the screen for each pay period, who's approving what. So yes, there is record of the, all that. Okay, now again, I was just curious from that perspective, if there was a limit, I can anticipate John um, having to do this several times. Um, and if, if, you know, if they don't listen, no. Again, you no, work early every day anyway, so <laughs> no, in all seriousness, I, I honestly expect to see some uh, whatever learning curve, especially yeah. with the persons that have to do the in and out at lunchtime issue. And um, that's why we went with the first month. We did find after about a month, once you once you're familiar with it, it actually was probably I would say a week to two weeks. You were really not. Many mistakes. There are occasional mistakes. With the with the hourly people, though, days to get a new habit. With the hourly people, though, if they're doing lunch, do they get that seven to eight minute window to come back and go out for lunch? Well, no, they'll punch out, but coming back, do they have a time frame of coming back? They have a window there as well. Seven to eight minutes. Just yeah, because we know it's never going to be especially yeah. impossible to be perfect. If you're going out to the hundreds. Hundreds of a second. Yeah. Don't nobody could ever know. What is lunch time? You're not. Lunch is supposed to have an hour. You're not. Frank, did that answer all your questions? I know you had a couple. So. You're talking, we can't hear you. <laughs> yeah, that did. Like I said, I was just curious if there was a limit to, you know, if, if we did it, you know, a dozen times over a month, is there an issue here? I agree with you that it's, it's going to be a, something to hold your responsible parties. You know, yeah, goes yeah. to the grindstone with it. I just I mean, curious anything. I mean, and, I mean, and or if there's the uh, history that I could use, if yeah. if in, it ever occurred where somebody was just a continuous thing coming at you, like, hey, I forgot again, I forgot again. Hey, look, it, I've done this for you 15 times in the last yeah. two weeks. It's about time you, you you learn this, or like you said, it's a performance issue at that. And point. your employee will know because in that employee box where you see the three KDs, I was doing it because of training, I had to for Joe to show, but if you look in that box at the end of that pay cycle and your initials are in there several times, that means you had to do something for that employee. Um, that's a problem. These are really fail safe measures. This is really about, like I mentioned, the bereavement, the COVID. Somebody's out on that Friday, and payroll is Monday, and I want to make sure they get it right, and I know they're not going to be in front of the computer. Um, that's where you would kind of step in and be like, okay, I'm going to take care of this because I want the payroll to be right. I want the person to be paid accurately. Um, but if it's just an oversight on the person's part, you could after that month or after some period you determine, say, you know what, I'm going to let it ride. Okay. <laughs> um, are there any other questions online in the room? I know we're past all 30, so I apologize, but all right. Um, Donna, myself, Lisa Brown, and Garrison are all administrators. So if there's something, please call us, email, stop by. Um, especially if you think something is not working right, please let us know. It may very well not be you. We have tested this thing, but even rolling it out, we found that there were a couple of new employees because there were a couple of things not checked in the background. They actually couldn't see their benefits. Is actually a problem there um, that we fix. It can be fixed. So if you're trying something like I'm following, I'm trying to do this, and I think I'm doing it the way I'm supposed to. Nothing, nothing in here, no step in here should be difficult to do. If you're finding that it's just not working, call us, let us know. And just so you guys know, we told in the user training, told people to at least try and log in and make sure their login works. But also if they want to, they can start playing around with Time off, um, clocking in and out, nothing's gonna get pulled into payroll, nothing's gonna go live. But just you guys as supervisors, if, if you see something come through, like an email saying somebody had put stuff in, then you're just so you know, there are people gonna try playing with it and trying to do things to get used to it and trying to make sure things do work and they have all their options they need and all that. So just a heads up if you see something that could be why somebody is actually 
using the system and doing what they're supposed to do a little early. So February 6th puts us live. If um, some of us are practicing and we put our time in for vacation and all that, um, will that carry over to the from, next month? From February 6th on? It will be in the system. They will yeah. be they must submit it all? No. Oh, they don't. If, if you've already submitted from February 6th on with a slip, right. Donna's yeah. going to give that back to the employee to put in their time. So they can practice with it. But if it's if you're going in now for a future time, yep. my recommendation is if it's February right. 6th or later, just do it in the system going in the future. I didn't know if the so first month was a trick. This last week or two. I those I still have that I'm gonna get back to you. If it's if, if it's if effective it's, date of February 6th, right. right? You're doing this week or next, that's fine. Mm -hmm. the plan. Yeah, because yeah. this payroll like ending. I think people work. put in um like Time off request for the future date, and I yeah. didn't want to do anything with them until after the sixth. No, they can actually put that in now. If it's for a future date, yeah, and I don't have to wait. I can yes, and, and, and it will show up in that future date in that particular okay. pay period. It'll show up once we hit that pay period. And then just um, if it's in the system, system, not in the system. yeah, if it's if they put it not into the system, system. Yeah. some of us had our I have a note to change. Yeah, yeah. I have a note to change yours. Um, I, I was going to actually go through and check the supervisors just to see, and then kind of figure out when that would be ready. If I should be monitoring, I'm going to actually do yours um, this afternoon because that was one of my things to go through. We're uh, we're good, Frank. Unless you've got something else, whatever. We'll see you later. Okay.